Nassau County Executive Bruce Blakeman invites you to mark one year since Hamas attacked Israel on October 7th. Join us as we come together this Monday, October 7th at 6 p.m. at the Harry Chapin Lakeside Theater in Eisenhower Park. Let's stand together in solidarity with Israel and those held hostage Monday, October 7th, 6 p.m. at Eisenhower Park. For more information, visit NassauCountyNY.gov. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. At this hour, a very serious situation in Florida. This is the reaction of a couple there seeing a tornado in real time and their reaction. Oh, oh my God. God. Holy s***. We need to go check on Heather and Curtis. And that's what people all over Florida need to do, and that's check on loved ones. But that won't be able to happen until daylight in the morning. Hurricane Milton slamming into Florida's west coast as an extremely dangerous storm, bringing a life-threatening surge of up to 120 miles per hour winds that left nearly 2 million people without power and areas completely flooded with water. The number to reach me live right now, 646-720-0635. The Superstorm was downgraded to a Category 2 at about 10 p.m., but in Tampa, for example, the fire commissioner, in fact, areas all around Florida communities, but in Tampa, the fire commissioner has been forced to pull first responders off the roads for the time being. And so the high wind gusts, uh, for example, if if you've ever been to Tropicana Field, and I have, where the uh, Tampa Bay Rays play, I don't know if the if the roof is uh, completely gone, but panels, the wind gusts have tore literally multiple panels off the roof of Tropicana field the mayor's residence in Cocoa Beach Florida has been destroyed and I I want to begin this hour we'll talk the election and so on but right now it's Florida and I want to begin this hour with all of us having if you will a minute of prayer if you will for the people of Florida and while you're listening to this clip I'm about to play what it what it is video of of debris falling from rooftops water smashing into nearby apartment buildings the cargo uh uh, uh, trucks, whatever you call them, they, they they have the uh those big trucks with materials and all types of different things. You see them literally falling like nickels. They're stacked up as they always are uh, on top of each other, and you see them literally falling off. And you see in in the video, you're gonna hear the audio right now. You see a steel rooftop, a steel rooftop flying off like it's as easy as opening a candy wrapper listen to this folks And that's just a little bit of the sound of what's occurring right now at this hour in Florida. 
the politics of this situation, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. This is now, what, a 48-hour story? He says he would call Vice President Kamala Harris, that he would pick up the phone and call her if she had something to contribute to the situation, rather than, in his words, the vice president just playing politics. And I heard what you said about Vice President Harris and the phone call. Did she ever get through? You know, Brett, like I said, my job is to marshal resources and work with everybody to have an effective response. If I And she thinks it should be about her. If I honestly thought that there was something to be gained, I would pick up the phone and call her. The fact of the matter is she has no role in this process. She's not part of the chain of command. I am working with President Biden and FEMA and our state and local partners, and we're getting the job done. She has never been interested in any of the storms we've had in the state of Florida for her entire time as vice president. Now she's out there attacking me because I'm not catering to her whims. All she's trying to do is inject herself to be a part of her political campaign. I don't have time for political games. We've got a job to do. We got people's lives on the line, and that is our sole focus. Well, most importantly, uh, hopefully everyone gets through this okay. We're praying for your state. Uh, Governor, we appreciate the time. And boom. Thanks. Boom, boom, boom. DeSantis putting it on the line, not willing to play the politics of what the vice president, she's trying to express and show leadership while people are fighting for their lives in Florida and not just Florida, North Carolina as well. So one one couple in Florida tonight, a short time ago, their home has been flooded. They open the door and there's a couple of feet of water all over their home. But that's not all. Guess what else is there in their living room and hisses at them? Just as you might imagine, with all the alligators in Florida, a couple open their door tonight to go back into their home to, to view the damage, couple of feet of water everywhere, and in the middle of their house is this huge, large alligator with his mouth wide open and hissing. Oh, my Holy sh- Literally, the alligator's mouth is wide open and he's hissing. And uh, that's the least of the wor- people of Florida. They have to also worry about the uh, downed power lines and so on. And this is part of a report from the Weather Channel. And again, the thing that we are paying mind to is those power lines. That one in the distance there in particular sparking we are worried that there could potentially be a fire that starts here. And again, that has been a major issue all across this area. Getting text messages most recently as five minutes ago from a friend who has family that lives in Sanibel Island. A number of homes over there on fire, Bernie. Homes on fire. Uh, uh, it's, it, it, it's going to be a rough overnight in the uh, state of Florida Uh, As we speak in terms of what's going on, some of the uh, local stories that we are looking at. So we know the big uh, interview Monday night that the vice president did with 60 Minutes. Well, come to find out, uh, it appears that some of her answers, as you might expect, were word salad, but it didn't air that way. And what is going on? with New York City government. Oh my God, the the latest video. So last night they hold um, some type of Latino affair, Hispanic affair at Gracie Mansion where the mayor happens to reside and two women get into it. And let's just say it looked like a fight on the street corner where one girl says to her girlfriend, hold my earrings, and then the other one puts Vaseline on her face. This is how bad this was. And it's all on video. It's hard to hear, but it's all on video. And so you see a woman assaulting Dr. Miriam Singh at Gracie Mansion, right? But this is not just any woman doing the assaulting. 
right? This woman is a press secretary uh, at at the uh, New York City Department of Correction, and so she's an official. And you see two male correction officers in uniform trying to stop her. So she says something to to Dr. Miriam Singh, and, and now I'm just giving you my interpretation. I don't know if this is fact. Uh, Dr. Singh is like, really? And she starts to record the woman. And boy, did that set this woman up, set her off. She tries to snatch the cell phone several times from Dr. Singh. So then she acts like she's not paying attention to Dr. Singh. And so Dr. Singh lets her guard down and she's holding the phone at, at, uh, at, at chest level. And all of a sudden, this woman who is a press secretary for the New York City Department of Correction snatches the phone out of her home, a phone out of her arm, excuse me, and throws it across Gracie Mansion. Gracie Mansion, the people's house. And then you see the woman that's supposed to be the press secretary. She's basically in Dr. Singh's face. Now, these two women look like they're inches from, from swinging on each other. And she's in her face pointing. And I'm looking at this video. And these are New York City government officials. And I can't tell you what it really looked like, how bad it was, because I don't want to be accused of racial discrimination. But it was absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. Let's start with your calls, wide ranging issues you you issues you folks want to talk about this morning. Let's begin with Rich in Chicago. Rich, what's on your mind? Yeah, I want to thank you. You gave me the courage to call you tonight by giving me the <laughs> recommendation to call you. Uh, and I want to thank you for that. Um, in their Twitter chat, and, and I and I recall just a few minutes ago, you said you were nervous. What is there to be nervous about, Rich? Well. Uh, no, I just I'm not used to calling on the radio. Um, but the thing that prompted me to call was, you know, all the whole Kamala versus Trump. And of course, I'm a Trump supporter, and just reading the news today, every day you see some outrageous news story. I heard about this Kansas University of Kansas professor um, spewing this hate about, you know, for any non Kamala supporters. This profession encouraging violence against those people. I don't want to, and, uh, and, and that's disgusting, Rich. Crazy. And this, this professor should be suspended, or I don't know if he if he has tenure, but he should be fired immediately if he doesn't have tenure. Yeah, but yet you have all these stories about um, people trying to incite violence and just and, and violent rhetoric, but yet it seems like when when it's when it's um against Trump or Trump supporters, the media just ignores it or more or less just dismiss it. Or there, anything there, that there's, there's no doubt about it, but uh, the only thing I can say, Rich, is hang strong, stay strong, and motivate all your friends to turn out and vote. Don't take one thing for granted. I've got to take a break, Rich, or I would continue the call. Don't take anything for granted. People have to vote. Because in, what, 25 days, give or take, this belongs to you. It doesn't matter what I say. doesn't matter what the, what the pundits say. It belongs to you. We are going to take a quick break, and I am coming right back with an update on Florida. Stay with us. This is Dominic Carter. This episode is brought to you by Amazon. The holidays are here, and you know what that means? It's time to get your friends and family the gifts they deserve. Take the stress out of shopping with Amazon's great deals and low prices on a huge range of items from toys to tech and much more. Whoever you're gifting for, Amazon has great prices on everything you need this holiday season. Shop early holiday deals now. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And again, the number to reach us live is 646-720-0635. I'm going to try this 
emphasis on try for the second night in a row. Sherman in Manhattan, Barbara in New Jersey. Let's bring both of them in live uh, to the conversation. Let's uh, let's start. Uh, let's start this morning with Barbara. Barbara, what's on your mind? Okay, Dominic, thanks for taking the call. I hope we can have a discussion over the issues and as opposed to talking about 500 pounders when I was, he ne- Sherman never saw me. Um, but uh, you don't know if I was, dr- do you know if I was drunk or not? See, this is why yeah, I say you're a hypocrite. Dr- if you can prove that I was drunk, then here's the deal. If you think I was drunk, I think you're an obese 500 pound woman. You were saying, so you, can take you know, what, you know how I know you, you were see? drunk? Because oh, see, you well, were you know how I know you were fat- not drunk. You were saying, I'm not drunk. I only had one martini. Why do you have to say that? Well, you sounded different than usually, and you said the things that you usually don't want to say, um, and that's why you came across sounding so hateful. But let's let I hope that we can leave politics out of this hurricane, is what I was calling about tonight, and that we can unite as a country. Okay, so what um, does that mean? I, I think I wish that we could move away from politics. Well, then and, shouldn't you be blaming the vice president? No, I'm so, uh, you know, I, I, I wish we wouldn't. But once Trump started, you know, with these, with the misinformation about what mis- uh, misinformation, what and, I know that, you know, Barbara, it was see, it's wicked what the Biden, what the White House is doing. Their own person, May Orcas, said there was no more money. So how do you say Trump? Well, there's money tied up, but the FEMA thing that they gave money to that migrants. That came no from May Orcas. He, he said that. that. What does Trump have to do with this? No. Because Trump started the politicization of this. No, May Orcas said there was no more money. Right, that's not that's not a political statement. That's saying the fact. Okay, and, and you don't Trump think people are going to get upset when they've lost everything, and you're being offered seven hundred and fifty dollars, and you can't even get that for people to be upset. But the problem is when you start lying about it and misinforming people, and and then you know oh, the Biden on, administration Barbara, has you no don't choice really believe that. but to respond, and they have to respond. Okay, let, say, let's let's hey, let's Trump, bring Sherman in. Let, let's hear what he has to say to what you just said. Sherman, Sherman, I I don't know what happened to Sherman there. Well, Barbara, are you still with me? Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Hello, I'm here. Oh, okay, uh, hey. okay. All yeah, right. Do you okay, have a was, reaction saying, to what Barbara saying, just said, Sherman? Uh, here's here's what I'm saying. I believe that the Democrat Party only seems to have money for people that they think possibly will end up voting for them. Isn't that fascinating? If the, the, the coincidence now they have money to put people thousands of people in hotel rooms right they have money to house and feed people here's what i would do in a perfect world i would say all these millions of thousands of people that are here illegally sorry guys we got to put you up in a tent somewhere and we're not going to give you those great meals you were getting we're going to give you bologna sandwiches peanut butter sandwiches maybe if you're lucky you get a tuna fish sandwich and a bottle of water until we can help and support all the people in this blessed country we're living in that are citizens and, and uh, that are here legally. We're so, gonna help so, them sounds the great to me, week. Sherman. Hey, Sherman, I want you and Barbara to stay with me live because I've got to take a break update on uh, Florida. But we're coming right back to their live calls in just a moment. I agree with Sherman's idea. Eat bologna sandwiches every day. I don't care what you eat. You're here at the expense of the American people. I'm coming right back. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And uh, we are back. And before we return to Sherman and uh, Barbara, something I want you to hear. We all know that the vice president, Kamala Harris, sat down uh, 60 minutes at the interview on Monday. Well, it turns out what she said, what actually aired, Two different things. What she said, word salad, what she ate, what they aired, appear uh, appears to make perfect sense. Listen to this, folks, a before and after, if you will, of Kamala Harris with 60 Minutes. But it seems that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not listening. Well, 
the work that we have done has in a number of movements in that region by Israel that were very much prompted by or a result of uh, many things, including our advocacy for what needs to happen in the region. But it seems that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not listening. We are not going to stop pursuing what is necessary for the United States to be clear about where we stand on the need for this war to end. Two different versions. I'm talking to Sherman in Manhattan, Barbara in New Jersey. So I'm looking at my Twitter, um, at my ex at Dominic TV and will the thrill Barbara says, I'm quoting here. Barbara is definitely a man or transgender. How do you react to that, Barbara? I react to that just like, uh, uh what, uh, Sherman said about me being fat and, you know, the hateful things and that, that Sherman said about, you know, me being an enemy because I support Kamala Harris. He's asking you really? about the gentleman, Will. Stop being obsessed with me. Stop having really? a hard on for me. He's asking you okay. a specific question. You're not responding to the question. Okay. Well, oh, don't don't worry, don't worry, Sherman. I'm, I, the, the, this is what I call giving someone rope. Go ahead. These people can't Barbara. stand that I have the answers. No, 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 no. <laughs> you didn't answer the question, <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> Wow. No, I'm, I'm giving you plenty what of time to answer it. Go ahead and answer it. What's the question? Be, be specific then. I, again, the quote from Will the Thrill, and he's not the first person. That I, I receive these comments every day as it relates okay, to no, you. No, it's not true. Barbara it is, is definitely true. a man or transgender. We have plenty no, of people that are transgender that call the show. So if you are transgender, that's not a problem. But no, he's asking a legitimate true. question. I am not. I am not. And and they're trying to make fun of me and to say, oh, Wait, my voice I'm trying to make fun of you, not you, the, those people that wrote those comments. Could we get so it's okay. not true. OK, now, in response, uh, Sherman laid out Wait, what's a not true. Dose. You're still not, res- not. You're being very vague. What's not true? It's not true that I'm trans. Okay? It's just a, what you have a hard time defining what a woman is. It's a real simple question. And we should not not have had to spend three minutes on this. I am not trans. Okay. Okay. And so, and and, what else do you want? Okay. And you're definitely not a man. No. Why the long pause? Well, Well, why the long pause? I don't understand. There's no long pause. I I just gave you an answer and you, I don't know exactly what you, what you want. You want me to say it again? I could say it again. No, I'm, no, I'm no, no. I, I don't want you to say it again because, because I can only give Sherman, you to uh, another minute or okay. two. But uh, go so, ahead with your point, Barbara, and then Sherman has to have the counter. Go ahead. Okay. Sherman dropped a double dose of misinfo is what I call it. And that was in the last segment saying that, oh, we should give them a peanut butter sandwich and, and bologna like they're getting right now five star meals. No, that's the standard of food that they're receiving these migrants. So that's wrong yeah, to try to lie that's and not say that they true. have a high standard. That's, that's not true. true. The other thing is, they if, they have if, turned down quote unquote American food because they want cultural culturally appropriated food. Well, that's well, it, it's culturally appropriated at the, at the same standard. The other thing Sherman said is that if we wouldn't give them the money or to the migrants that we're spending, then there would be more money for hurricane relief situations like this. That is not true. The money for yes, hurricane relief is from FEMA. It's two separate things, and you can't okay. mix those two. Just like Lebanese money, you can't mix. If okay. Trump wouldn't use FEMA right. money to okay. build a wall, okay. So we 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 heard we heard you, Barbara. Your reaction, okay. Sherman. Barbara, you know, with that with that voice of hers, she sounds like she's seething. She sounds like she's got hot coals down her chest. I mean, what an angry, listen to the tone of voice. of Barbara is a perfect example of what a dangerous person happens to be, because Barbara is the type of person, she's a perfect example of like in communism and, and, and Marxism, she's the type of person where she would inform on her neighbors, even lie on them, if that would keep the party in power. She, she has the total psyche and character of that type of person. And that is the biggest problem in our country. We have these mentally ill, delusional uh, uh, people that swear they're so important, you can't can't tell them nothing. They're not rational. You can't reason with them. It's okay for her to say that I was drunk, but if somebody says she's a man, she's so offended. You see that you see the, the narcissism? 
uh, and, and the hypocrisy. And it's okay for her to tell me that I'm drunk, but somebody uh, online can't question uh, her sexuality or whether she's a man or woman. She's so offended by that. You see? So anybody listening, Barbara is a perfect example of what the problem is. The mentality of narcissism, self-importance, and she's a hypocrite and a fraud. She can say that I was drunk. She wasn't with me in a bar, but nobody can talk about her sexuality or question her weight. But she can say with affirmity and absolutely that I was drunk. Wasn't with me. That didn't speak to the bartender that served me the one drink, but she's telling me what I am, or what I was. You see the hypocrisy, everybody? And I want to yeah. thank her for being such an idiot and being so self-important that she's delusional. Okay. Well, okay. Well, now, now, now I have to give her the final say, and then I have okay. to move on from both of yeah. you. Go right ahead, Barbara. Here's the bottom line. Sherman, you can't get over the fact that you exposed yourself for being this hateful person. And I re-listened to what you said two nights ago. You were talking about Russ and Kamala Harris supporters. You said these people should be killed. You were also referring to terrorists, but you mixed the protesters and pro-Palestine people together with that. That's despicable. You're a hateful person. Get over it. Okay. I thank the both of you. I appreciate your call. Sherman in Manhattan, Barbara in New Jersey. Let's go to Isaac in Brooklyn. Isaac, what's on your mind? Um, hello, Dominic. Listen, where, where was Kamala Harris the past three and a half years? All of a sudden now she's popping up on the hurricanes and everything. Where was she for the past three and a half years, Barbara? Where? All of a sudden, DeSantis said that she never helped her on anything of these hurricanes. And she's accusing him of playing politics. I mean, DeSantis was dealing with these hurricanes. He's amazing responses to all the hurricanes that he has dealt with. And all of a sudden now, she's lecturing him and saying he's playing politics. Who's the one that's playing politics? And DeSantis made this point, and he made it great. I'm sorry. Just for that, you got to just think that she's a total, total sketch. And she does what she needs to do at the right time and, and only to get a vote. And then the second she's elected, everything else goes out the window and they just stand to just make everything miserable for us. That's the point. Well, I hear you, Isaac, and uh, you, you make some legitimate points there. Thank you very much for the call. Let's see what Russ in White Plains has to say. Russ, what's on your mind? Oh, man, I'm sorry. Everybody seems to have a hard-on for Sherman. And I think he protests too much about being drunk. He was definitely drunk. And one thing else, Sherman, is raping someone is not having sex. So how he doesn't understand, like, how you could kill someone and then rape them is because rape isn't sex, Sherman, you idiot. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm completely lost there, Russ. But, you know, I think Russ hung up. Uh, I I think Sherman's point was, and I'll repeat it, is that it's sick that you can hate an entire people, but you want to have sex with their women. And I think that's a, which makes you a hypocrite. And I think that Sherman was dead on accurate with that point. So I don't understand exactly what, uh, what Russ was just saying to me, but Russ decided to, uh, to, uh, hang up. Let's go to Joaquin in Pennsylvania. What's on your mind? Hey, Dominic. Yeah, I really wanted to take Russ on because you know what? I'm a Zionist. Are you a Zionist? Don't you want to be a Zionist too? And when it comes to this war in Israel, we should not be stopping them. Right now, they are winning. And when it comes to cancer, you have to cut out as much as you can. You have to get everything. Okay, and but so wait, Joaquin, Joaquin, that sounds great. And I, I hear callers on this station all day long, uh, the station in New York, right? And saying don't stop Israel. But what about the possibility? I, I believe Israel has a right to defend itself. But what about the possibility that a, a full world war could break out over this? You know what? We're, we're heading up to a world war as it is anyway. And I'm not saying I don't want a world war. Believe me, I don't. I, I have you know four children, nine grandchildren, okay? But unfortunately, you know, allowing Iran, that was the other point of it, to get a nuclear weapon, that's going to lead to World War III anyway. So if Israel has a possibility of stopping Iran, who keeps funding all of this, uh, all of these terrorist organizations, basically anti-Western civilization uh, countries and organizations, they need to stop them now while they can before it's too so, late. So you're you're willing to lose your life over this? What's going on in the Middle East? Is that what you? Because you can't have it both ways. You know, the problem is, is that it is 
if if it's not stopped now, it's going to happen. In other words, you can't appease appeasing will never work. It's a tough. It's, it's yes, you're throwing a tough question out there, you know. But right now, while Israel has the upper hand, they they need to finish it through. That's my opinion. And and we're we're all uh, entitled to our opinions. And one thing you're correct about, Joaquin, when you say uh, appeasing will never uh, work, and and that we can't deny. That that you can't deny. Thank you for the call. Let's go to Vincent in Brooklyn. Vincent, what's on your mind? Dominic, I don't believe Freeman's story about there being two separate accounts because here's an example. I had to pay the insurance on my house recently, and the broker said, well, this is a three-year policy, so you're going to have to come up with three years' worth of payments. So I said, all right, give me a couple of days, and I'll move the money around from uh, my different accounts, and, uh, and I'll cut you a check and send it. And sure enough, that's what I did. So I don't believe, I don't believe their story. I do believe the story that they spent uh, uh, the bulk of the money that they did have on the migrants. And as one of your callers said, why are we sending $150 million over to Lebanon to help them out? I mean, Charity, what happened to that old adage, Dominic? Charity begins at home? (laughs) Well, I I certainly agree with you on that, Vincent. And I think that's what makes... uh uh, Trump resonating uh, so much. And it's one of the reasons why I believe now more than ever, he's going to win the election because people are watching uh, what happened with the hurricane uh, in North Carolina, uh, the border of Tennessee. People are watching or going to be watching as the devastation is taking place right now as we speak in Florida. People are going to be watching to see how this is handled. And, you know, I think we can agree, Vincent, it's been an open checkbook. No problems when it comes to migrants. For other people, open checkbook, not for our own. I mean, and people who are suffering, they're black, they're white, they're Hispanic, they're Asian, they're Muslims, they're every religion that we have in this country. What's the deal? I mean, charity begins at home. Agreed. Agreed. Vincent, thank you uh, for the call. Let's stay in Brooklyn. Let's say good morning to Francine. Francine, what's on your mind? Good morning, Dominic. How are you? I hope you're fine. hope you're well. I'm sorry about the people in Florida. But I think that is despicable for that person to say that uh, Barbara was a man. I mean, what difference does it make? You know, why would you say something like that? Because people people want, first of all, uh, if you only knew... (laughs) what I have to deal with when I put Barbara on. I'm just not reading the emails. I received two or three emails of why is she on? And why why not is she on? Why not? Well, that's, that's my, that's my attitude. But then the other emails I receive is that that's not really a woman. That's a man. And and, and I know you're, I know you're proudly transgender, Francine. Um, but I do think it's a legitimate question that people have been asking. And I, I listen, listen, Francine, I'm not going to go through the whole litany. There are a number of guests that I have on. And you should see the emails that come in. People, for one reason or another, don't like uh, certain guests. And and the more I'm taking I'm taking her out of this now, Barbara, out of it. Uh, mm-hmm. They don't like certain guests. Uh, I don't want to say the names right now because it's not fair. And and they they just complain bitterly. I don't know why they think that I have that I that I must listen to them, but they do. Francine, you have the last well, word before I take a break. Well, I I think what Sherman has to say, he's making some great points, and I like what Barbara has to say. They both made great points, and I wish they could just. It seems like they, this is a segment that they have, and I, I just wish they would be able to get along better. Fair enough. Francine, thank you for the call. As always, I hope you are well. I've got to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to have an update on the situation in Florida and, of course, more of your telephone calls. This is Dominic Carter. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. 
And the number to reach me up until the top of the hour live right now is 646-720-0635. Open forum, whatever issue you may want to take on. Let's go to Miriam in Queens, line three. Miriam, what's on your mind? Good morning, Dominic. I'm going to say to you in Spanish, Yo amo tu programa y tú eres maravilloso. Listen, Dominic, the reason why I'm calling is but that wait, I was... Wait, 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 Miriam, what what does that mean in Spanish? Kim, um, that I love your show. Oh, you thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. The, <laughs> the love's going right back at you. So anyway, go ahead. Listen, I was listening to Rita and 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 John um, on Monday, and they and Bill O'Reilly came up, and he's saying that there's something that um, the people in New York are not paying attention, and it's something that the 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 state is doing that they put in two proposal for the election. Um, on November 6th, and he's, and he's one that will say that uh, you can abort a baby when they, when you in nine months, right? And then the other one is that the, the, the kids, they will, uh, I mean, the school will decide or will give right to the kids if they want to change their sex. And then the parents will not be able to do anything about it. And if they make a fuss, they will go to jail. So I want you, please, to emphasize this sometime. And also, you know, um, there was, a, 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 he used to be a senator, this person. His name is um, Ruben Diaz. And Ruben Diaz is going every every day on, on Radio Vision Cristiana, telling the, the Christians to make sure that they say no to this proposal. And he's coming also on, on the weekend on on, on the radio station called 1380 because a lot of Spanish listen to that radio station. And I wish that your boss, and he doesn't sleep, John Cosmetiti, will get some uh, Spanish-speaking person there that will not be a knucklehead like the vice president that will give a little show because there's a lot of Spanish that we are like Republican. And sometimes, you know, people, they don't. So wait, wait, them. Miriam, Miriam. So I, I, I'm not close enough to being Latino. No, you are. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm only I'm only joking. And, and I and I hear you, Miriam, uh, as far as your uh, as far as your concern. Uh, let, let me just say this. So one, you said November 6th. The election is November 5th. I'm sorry. Right. Yes. Right. No problem. No problem. And uh, I've heard these uh these uh these additional uh issues on the uh, ballot mentioned before. I have to admit I have to look into them more. So I can't give you a uh, definitive uh, answer. But I saw uh, Mr. Katsimatidis and Mrs. Katsimatidis, the owner uh, the owners of the uh, station, I saw them at an event, the Marconi Awards uh, in, in Manhattan, where all the radio stations that are being honored or up for awards come into uh, come into New York City for a big, big dinner. And uh, it was held in um, in New York uh, tonight. So I saw them just a short time ago. And uh, I, I can only tell you this, that they are always, always, always uh pushing forward new ideas the station at least the new york station has had more success uh uh than ever historic success right now uh my my three to four p.m show uh i'm not gonna brag about it right now Miriam, because i'm out of time the uh the midnight show here eastern standard time it's all because of people like you so Miriam, don't be a stranger i promise the next time you call i will be updated completely on these issues folks i want you to do me a favor and i mean this sincerely considering what residents in florida are going through have a great day